What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some game film from five-star wide receiver Jeremiah Smith out of South Florida. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver or a quarterback and would like to train with us this offseason, we are going to be traveling out to eight more states across the U.S. for two-day-long QB and wide receiver training camps. Next up on our camp tour, we will be coming out to Honolulu, Hawaii, then Boston, Mass. Massachusetts, and then we'll be finishing off the year in Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles. So if you guys are local to one of those cities and would like to train with us for two whole days, fellas, check out that very first link in the description below where you can get all the information and learn how you can sign up. So again, very first link below. Let's get started with this video. So this Jeremiah Smith is probably one of the most complete wide receivers I have seen at the high school level. He does everything right. He's got the size, he's got the speed, but I want to showcase to you guys some of the things that he does when the pads are on that give him that five-star ranking. Because, I mean, I know a lot of you guys, you know, you probably want to play college football. I'm sure most of you have dreams and aspirations of playing college football, some at the Division One level. Some of you guys just want to play college football in general. And on tape, he does everything that a college coach wants to see in a wide receiver. Now listen, he's six foot three. He probably runs a sub four, five, 40. But the things that he shows on tape are things that every single wide receiver across the country can do to showcase their abilities, right? So let's play this first example full speed. And this is not a route. This is not a catch. This is a block that he makes. And this is something that wide receivers who are in an offense that maybe don't throw the ball 30, 40 times a game, maybe don't have the most talented quarterback, can do on every single snap. So let's watch this first play. So the ball comes off, and he completely pancakes this guy on a bubble screen play. Now we're going to look at this second clip here in a second, but I want to break this down. So again, College coaches are looking for wide receivers who can make explosive plays. You got to think about how many wide receivers there are across the country, right? Think about how many states there are. Then think about how many high school football teams there are in each state. Now multiply that by four. That's how many wide receivers there are. There are four receivers on the field, usually at a given time. That's a lot of wide receivers. So they don't want a wide receiver who can just come off. He catches a three-step slant against zone and gets tackled for maybe a 10-yard gain. They don't want that type of player because there's thousands of other guys like that, especially at the power five level. They want explosive playmakers. So they want guys who could catch that three-step slant, break a tackle, then take it 60, 70 yards for a touchdown. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, coach, I don't get enough opportunities to make those types of play. You know, we run the ball a lot. My quarterback doesn't throw me the ball a lot. I don't get targeted a lot. These are the situations. Every single screen pass, every single run play is an opportunity to make an explosive play. So you look at Smith here, and again, he's your you know five-star guy. You see it all over the country. You get those wide receivers. You know, wide receivers usually have a big ego. They don't want, they're not, you know, the biggest work ethic guys at times. They just want to catch touchdowns. But this showcases that he's not that way. And that's why I think he's one of the most complete recruits there are. And I think we can all learn from this. This is a this is a bubble screen, and he is putting this guy on his butt. This is an opportunity for highlight. Rather than just, you know, blocking him lazily to the sideline. Yeah, maybe my guy turns up and gets a big gain, but this is an explosive play. And these are the plays that you have to showcase on film. So what's the technique behind blocking? If you're a wide receiver and you have a lot of these opportunities, you might be thinking, well, okay, how do I actually do this? So there's three specific things when it comes down to blocking a DB that you need to focus on. Number one, we have to be low. In football, the low man is always going to win. Now, he's six foot three, right? He's a big dude. So him getting low puts him in a very, very powerful position. Now, when you get low, you have to make sure that you are driving from your legs and driving from your hips hips upward. So you don't want to be that guy that gets low, but your feet die. You want to keep your feet active and you want to drive from those hips up and keep your feet moving. That is a textbook block. And now if some of you are wide receivers, I remember, you know, coaching wide receivers at the high school level, something I would always try to pick whose brain I would always try to pick would be the offensive line coach. Like, Hey, what do you have in your guys do? What is some of the techniques that you're having your offensive line do this, that, the third to help my wide receivers get better at blocking, right? Cause it's not just go out there and go block. There's a technique to it. And those three Three things, fellas, us getting low, us making sure we're driving from my legs and my hips up and keeping my feet active is what will make us a more explosive run blocker or screen blocker. And these are plays that really make you stand out. Now, again, I'm going to play this full speed and then we're going to look at another play on his film. And these are all plays on his highlight tape, fellas, because receivers, honestly, like, you know, 
it's you're it's not like you're a quarterback where you have an opportunity every time you throw the ball for a highlight, right? Quarterbacks have more chances. Receivers obviously don't because you got to share the ball every pass play. There there are three other guys that could get the ball, so you maybe don't have as many opportunities. But every single run play is an opportunity, fellas. You guys have to understand that. So let's look at this clip right here, right? So he drives this DB. It's in zone coverage. He's bailing all the way into the sideline. Again, now maybe that's a little bit excessive, but still, at the end of the day, these are highlights, and your film is what gets you recruited. A lot of people have the wrong information on the recruiting process. They think it's all about the seven-on-seven. Seven. They think it's all about the exposure camps. And, you know, those might be great. I think 99% of those are complete scams. Because, like, let's, let's put it in the perspective this way. Let's say you're a wide receiver at the high school level. And, you know, let's say, you know, maybe you're going into your junior year, you had a decent sophomore year, you have some good film, and, you know, you want to go out to these exposure camps to get yourself noticed and get your name out there, right? But nobody at the exposure camp knows who you are. No college coaches know who you are, but your hope is I'm going to go to this camp, I'm going to get some attention, and um, that's going to start the recruiting process for me. But at the end of the day, fellas, if your film doesn't back it up, you can meet a million college coaches, but they're not going to take a chance on you until you see the actual game film. You see all these five-star guys, all the guys that have the quote-unquote exposure. And it's like, what are we actually looking for exposure for? Like, are we trying to get exposure to get more followers on social media, or are we trying to actually get ourselves to college and get recruited? What's the purpose here, right? Because all these guys, all these top-tier guys, you know what they have in common? They're all great football players. So if you're that guy that, you know, maybe doesn't have the greatest film and you're wondering, man, what, what can I do to get recruited? What can I do to get exposure? Improving your game and showcasing what you can do when the pads come on and having an explosive highlight tape is what can make you better. That's what, that's what will set you up in the recruiting process. Not going to a million different camps, breaking the bank, traveling across the country if you're not at that level yet. Why not? Like, Because again, obviously it's a financial commitment to go to all these different camps, to go to all these different showcases. Why not take that money and invest it in some kind of training, invest it in a speed coach, invest it in a, in a, in a gym membership, something that's going to help you actually improve on the field in pads to get that film. And then maybe let's start talking about getting your name out there. But a lot of people got it wrong. A lot of people think they're going to show up to a college camp, be camper number 137 out of 350, and I'm going to get picked out of a hat. You know how hard that is to do? And you might be that good. You might be a guy who's even even a great player. But at those camps, fellas, you get like four reps every hour. Like that's not enough time. Your film is what speaks for itself. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, this guy, Jeremiah Smith, he's getting recruited, you know, because he's six foot three and he runs, you know, sub four, five forty. Like that's what a college coach wants. Coach, I'm five foot ten, you know, I don't run that fast of a forty. Like, how does this apply to me? But when you watch this guy on film, there's a lot more to him than just his size and his speed. And this is something all wide receivers can learn from. He knows how to actually run routes. And that's why I think he's a very, very um complete wide receiver. So this is some seven on seven film. We're going to look at a game film example here in a second, but I want you to watch this route. This is a post route against the zone coverage DB. Now, I think there have been a lot of recruits over the years, especially at the wide receiver position, who get away with just being very big and very fast. You see it all the time. There was a wide receiver a couple years ago, I, I feel... I want to say he was out of Missouri, but he was, you know, five-star guy, all this and all that. And I didn't really think his film was that crazy impressive because it was just him just running around out there and the quarterback would throw it above the rim. He would just jump up and jump over everybody because he was bigger than everybody. And it's like, that's easy. And you could get away with that at the high school level. But when you're facing a talented, a top-tier DB, you ain't going to be able to get away with that at the next level. So I think a lot of times, you know, the five-star rankings, four-star, this offer, that offer, it's not really warranted at times. But this is a textbook route, and this is something you guys all can learn from. So he's going to be running this route against like a zone coverage DB, right? So like, let's say, for example, this is like cover three. DB's responsibility, deep third of the field. We got a safety in the middle of the field, but he's got to run a post. A lot of times these big, fast guys are lazy with this. They'll just run up and they'll just take off and go run the post. And then this DB's on their hip, safety's over the top, but he's just bigger than than everybody so the quarterback just throws it up top and he'll make a play but this showcases how he knows how to run routes and this is what translates to the next level so db who's in zone obviously he doesn't want to get beat deep and this db's outside leverage so obviously he doesn't want to get beat to the outside so what Smith uses here is something called a vertical set. He comes off the ball and he gives this move, this just subtle move right here, this little jab to the inside, and he pushes to the outside, attacking this DB's leverage. Because when you attack a DB's leverage, what is that going to do? 
that's going to make him keep his leverage. He's going to try to stay disciplined because his sole purpose, don't give up the fade in cover three, especially when you have speed and size. That's already, you're a vertical threat before the ball is even snapped. So he comes off the ball. He gives that vertical set move. He starts to angle his stem at the DB to widen him, but that also creates a bigger window between the DB and the safety. And that's a quarterback friendly route. There is nobody around him to make this play. There is no safety because we created a bigger window. So many times wide receivers are lazy with this situation. They don't know actually how to run routes. And that's what prevents them, again, in a camp setting, in a showcase setting, on film. Coaches want to see guys who can run routes nowadays because offenses are continually or are, are continuously changing in the college level. Everybody wants that wide receiver who can separate because offenses are throwing the ball more 30, 40 times a game, air raid spread system. Let's get the ball downfield. So they're looking for wide receivers who can win and maybe not even wide receivers who are the fastest or the biggest guys. They're looking for guys who can separate and separation comes from knowing the moves to do like that vertical set move. So just a quick jab inside and knowing how to run the route, when to actually put that move in action. So let's play this again, full speed. Again, one of the most complete wide receivers, side speed, route running, hands, everything. And again, I don't put much weight on seven on seven film. That's just a good angle because I want you guys to see it. I highly recommend you check out his highlight tape because though, like, it is a freaking script of what you should try to put on your film to get to stand out and to get noticed. So this is another perfect example here of a wide receiver who knows how to run routes. This is for all you bigger wide receivers out there, because a lot of times, you know, you get the big, tall guys, athletic guys, you know, they got to run a goal line fade. They'll just take off and just, I'm bigger than the DB. I'm just going to go run to the back pylon, right? But if we know we got a DB who's inside leverage and he's disciplined and you just try to, t- and he's like, and he's talented, right? Because the DB position gets more talent every single year. If we just take off and try to go run to the sideline, what's this DB going to do? He's going to get hands on me and he is going to squeeze me to the sideline because his sole purpose is to not let me get, not let me go to the inside and force him to the outside, force the wide receiver to the sideline. So if I have to run a fade, it's simple. All we got to do is threaten him with that slant because that's where he doesn't have help and that's where we could get him to move. So that's what this that's what Smith does here. He attacks to the inside, attacks the DB's leverage to give himself more space, give the quarterback space. This is a quarterback friendly route. And that is how you guys, because again, to make highlights, to make plays on film, you need to get more targets. And how you get more targets is you run quarterback friendly routes. Quarterbacks don't want to throw fades when the wide receiver is like right on the sideline because that is an impossible throw. So you attack it. Let's move him to the inside. Let's attack this DB. Let's get him to move off that platform. Even if it's just a little bit, I can push up vertical and have space to the sideline where my quarterback can maybe throw a jump ball, put it back shoulder, put it over the shoulder, but I gave him room. And again, that's how we get more targets. That's how I get more opportunities to make big plays. Again, fellas, like if you just take off, like let's say, for example, this is not a wide receiver highlight. If you just take off and run, DB's right on your hip. Maybe you got him by a step and the quarterback throws a perfect ball and you catch the ball. Like that's not the best highlight because you ran a bad route. It was a perfect throw. But if you attack this DB, you move him, you give the quarterback space, throws a jump ball, makes a play. That's a highlight. And that is what shows out on film or stands out on film. So let's play this again, full speed again. It showcases that there's more to this guy than just height and speed. A lot of people will say like, oh, well, the five-star wide receivers, the five-star guys, they just have height. They're fast. That's all a college coach cares about. There are many other aspects that they look for. And this is one of the most complete wide receiver prospects I've personally seen. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like to come out and train with us in eight more states this offseason, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you out to one of our offseason camps. Again, all the way from Honolulu, Hawaii to Los Angeles, California. So again, very first link in that description below. I'll see you guys next time.